Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thank you for making time today. Good afternoon. Well, let's start with the markets. Stocks on Wall Street overnight rose to new record highs as investors look ahead to earnings for the second quarter, which will start coming out on Tuesday. Expectations that there will be a massive increase in earnings from a year ago now that the American economy is pretty much open. What's the story in the global markets? Yes, U.S. markets showed continued rise and has hit the benchmark record uh, for three major uh, indexes. Um, if you look at the uh, uh, Dow Jones, it added uh, 126 points, uh, up about 0.4 percent. S&P 500 gained 0.4 percent as well to 3,000, uh, 4,385. And Nasdaq was up also by 0.2 percent, uh, hitting one, uh, 14,733. Now, uh, if you look at the, uh, these rising trend, this is due to the expected earnings season. Uh, we are going to have some of the bank earnings starting uh, sometime this week, uh, starting the 14th of uh, uh, July. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs uh, and all uh, major banks will be all releasing the data, which will be showing uh, what's happening to the economic conditions uh, and whether or not interest rate environments should be further rising in the future or to fall. Um, and... Um, Basically, a lot of data will be coming out uh, to show whether or not U.S. economic recovery will be a long-term case or short-lived. Uh, also, the uh, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will be also appearing before the Congress on Wednesday and Thursday uh, in regards to the show uh, what he feels about the inflationary pressure of the current market. All in all, we get the feeling that the U.S. economy will be entering a Goldilocks period where the inflationary pressure will be quite reasonable as well as economic growth rate will be fairly reasonable. If you look at from the uh, 2009 to 2020, uh, when there was a very long period of the equity market rise, when we call that phase as Goldilocks phase, right before the COVID-19 case hit, um, we did see 2% inflation and 2% economic growth every year uh, for a very long period of time, which resulted into quite a significant rise of the U.S. market. Uh, we think that uh, we will at least have at least next two to three years of very similar period uh, when we see the economic growth rate inflation will be fairly reasonably good. Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, U.S. market would do continue rise. And the second quarter earnings should be fairly supportive of the uh, economic growth rate as well as the uh, equity market rise. So we are expecting that the trigger point for the further rise of U.S. market would be the second quarter results. And that should also trigger point most of the other economies as well as the other equity market to further rise in the future. Well, a Goldilocks scenario uh, would contrast uh, very nicely with a lot of the doom and gloom that's out there in the news uh, these days. Um, but uh, looking at that gain on Wall Street, it seems to have spilled over into Korea. Another gain similar to yesterday's here, the Kospi trying to climb back to that 3,300 level where it was a week ago. Uh, tell us about the domestic market. Right. Uh, if you look at the Korean market, it kind of overreacted uh, to the case where the U.S. interest rate falling to 1.25 percent. And Korea, we're talking about uh, possibility of earnings picking or the economic growth rate picking, therefore sell uh, into the news of the record high of U.S. market. Uh, but um, that decline was fairly limited. Uh, from the peak to bottom, it fell by about 3.8 percent, uh, now recovering quite nicely uh, back up. Uh, yesterday's session, it was up about 0.9 percent. Today's session is up another 0.8 percent. Uh, we're not to the record high level yet, but quite reasonably recovering nicely. And it seems that that trend is continuing for the cost stack as well. Now, also, uh, meanwhile, uh, First Vice Finance Minister Lee said that uh, government will beef up the monitoring of the financial risk as the global economic recovery could be slowing. That's what he's saying. And I think that kind of triggered the most of the people are uncertain about the uh, overall economic conditions. But 
Uh, I must say that the Korea's economic condition is reasonably strong, except the domestic consumption uh, uh, portion because of the high level of debt to uh, consumer debt level as a percentage of GDP. But nevertheless, uh, Korea is very dependent on export, and export numbers are very strong. Uh, it rose again by 14.1% in the first 10 days of July, uh, which is you know, quite significantly uh, strong relative to the July number of last year was very strong as well post COVID-19. So uh, it seems that the genuine growth is happening in terms of export uh, and it's uh, due to the global economic recovery and global economic growth rate. Um, now, if you look at um, robust demand areas, the chips, the oils and petrochemical products, uh, all these are showing very strong growth rate. Uh, and um, if that's the case, we think that Korea is in a very good shoes for the further uh, rise in the future. And speaking of oil and petrochemicals, another price to look at today uh, is oil, uh, also gold. Both of them are down. Oil because of concerns about the virus hitting the economy t again globally. Also, the OPEC countries uh, unable to reach a new deal to limit supplies. In the case of gold, it's down. Uh, but you have to wonder what the uh, inflation numbers this week uh, will look like. What can you say about gold and oil, Mr. Yu? Yes, um, the oil price were rising quite fast pace because of the supply control. Uh, demand is picking up, but not to the significant level relative to the 2018 period. Uh, and if you look at the rig counts of the U.S., it is only half of what used to be at 2018 peak of the oil price. So clearly the U.S. as well as OPEC Plus are uh, controlling the supply very aggressively that has resulted into a higher oil price environment. So if there's any kind of news that uh, these kind of negotiations are not happening uh, correctly or uh, reasonably uh, to limit the supply, then obviously uh, oil price will fall due to the high supply uh, coming through. Uh, we think that oil price is not going to be further rise from the current level. Uh, we think that the shale gas companies of U.S. makes reasonably good returns with the current oil price being around 70 to $75 range. Uh, we think that that should be the range bound per uh, period that will be happening over the next at least uh, uh, one year or so. Uh, in terms of the gold, obviously it is looking at as a safe asset. Uh, we do see continuation of the M1 growth rate happening in U.S. and global scale. And uh, now uh, China is also thinking about you know, raising the money supply growth rate uh, through the cutting the reserve ratios. Uh, so all that means is that uh, alternative asset uh, interest would continue to remain very strong. Uh, and the gold would be the one of the alternative assets that people would be interested. However, though, uh, we think that uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, as well as silver, are more in favor than the gold. So therefore, even though we do think the gold price is expected to further rise, uh, we should be looking at more of other alternative asset class. Well, and speaking of money supply, uh, today the Bank of Korea uh, released data on that subject. And from a year ago, we see M2 was up 11 percent. Lots of loans taken out. There are concerns uh, that this will keep sending uh, prices higher. But tell us about this report from the BOK and what it might say about the economy. Well, I think that the M2 growth rate needs to be picking up even further uh, because we did see a very weak uh, domestic consumption Era because if you look at the consumer debt level as being very high, uh, we do think that the continuation of support of liquidity is expected. Uh, if you calculate the M1 uh, divided by M2 ratios, uh, we did see that the uh, debt ratio being very high in terms of record number, which means that even though uh, BOK and money supply growth rate is extremely high, on the uh, printing side uh, or actual supply, uh, in terms of the M2 growth rate, it's much lower than what, uh, what of the M1 growth rate, which means that the velocity of money is low. Uh, and we 
would like to see that number further rise. So uh, we don't think that this M2 growth rate is going to fall further in the future. Uh, we think that it might further rise. Uh, if you just look at on a month-on-month -month basis, it's up only 0.6%. If you annualize that, that's less than 8%. We think that that number is not strong enough. Uh, we think that uh, domestic liquidity condition should be further improved because if you look at the domestic condition-wise, consumer debt areas and the also COVID-19 impact to the small uh, mid uh, cap companies and the mom pop shops, which is going to be quite negative. So we do think that the BOK is not going to be in any issues to cut interest rate anytime soon. Uh, we don't think that that action will happen until next year. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us as always. Thank you very much.